Does the pattern on this shirt make me look fat, Natalie? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God, everything. <laughs> makes me kind of hungry for a picnic. <laughs> you know what makes me look fat is my fat. <laughs> <laughs> is a lockdown. Are you worrying about it at all? Worried about what? Like, during this whole process of lockdown, like, do you ever worry about, you don't worry about weight gain. You're a workout person, though. You do CrossFit. No, I, I worry about weight gain constantly. Do you? I'm... I would like to lose 15 pounds. Why? I, because that's what I have. Okay. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> me too. Because I found it. That's me too. You know, I, like, I, I have weighed basically the same thing all of my adult life. I've gone through my phases where I've mm -hmm. gotten like, real skinny. But if I, if I lose a lot of weight, I look like a spoon. Because i got a big head. Yeah. And so I just <laughs> look like a spoon. Uh, and but I've gotten like real skinny, and then I'm like, eh, mm -hmm. I don't look right then, and then I gain weight, and I look right then. So I have to I have to be fluffy, just a little fluffy. But I but you know what helps? Uh, tanning. Yes. But I don't believe in getting in the sun or a tanning bed. But no spray tan. Is that what you do? Well, because everybody knows that dark fat looks better than white fat. It looks fat. better, right? And so, but like, now I like can't even I spray been, tan. I have seen some attractive fat tan girls. Yeah, I mean. Sure. <laughs> I think my cellulite looks better but when it's dark. I, exactly. But I've never I've never really seen a pasty white fat I'm girl and said your cellulite oh. both white. Steve and just woke pan. up. Oh hi Steve. Yeah. Oh, I'm paying attention. I'm working. I know, but you oh. you're interrupting. What are you what are you talking about now? I'm gonna have to see her cellulite in the tan oh. and white. I want well, I can see show both. you the white right now. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I got to that point, though, where, like, my skin, like, from the waist down, and Jade gets on to me all the time because the other day we were out walking, I was wearing shorts, and I was like, God, I'm just so pasty. And she's like, no, I'm white. You're not white. And she'd hold her arm over to mine, and she's like, see? And I said, yeah, but see, like, I'm ashy, nasty white. Yeah. You're milky white. There's a oh. difference. Like, like she has pretty skin, like, milky, like a model. She does. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you know, like model skin with some freckles on it and stuff. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing. It's exotic. You like it. I mean, yeah. It's, it's just a different kind of white. Not everybody has a permatan like Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians. True. I mean, look at her. Her well, skin is always perfect. she's just cute as a button. She is cute as a button. She is cute as a button. Mm -hmm. But when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, man, we'd get so tan. Of course, we were working, right? We were, through the summer, we were either playing ball. I saw pictures of me, like, from high school. I was so dark. I was as dark as the liquor in that bottle right there. I mean, it, like, there's no way that was healthy. Right? right. And so, like, I'm, I'm, I get nervous about that stuff. Have you ever had any spots cut off? Yeah, well, but not cut off. I had some Frozen. biopsies. Oh, okay. Like, they took some spots off my back just to check them, and they were yeah. all benign and fine. And, okay. Uh, I just got rid of some a couple of spots, and they cut them out. <laughs> Steve's got a knife. He's I ready to one. go. I could, I could take one out right now. Actually, I just think my doctor was bored. Yeah. He wasn't getting enough patience, and he's like, you know what? Let's cut you. <laughs> Let's just cut you. Uh, but anyway, that so you know where you get a tan? The where? best place to is on vacation and nobody is is gonna get to go on vacation because of this shutdown the whole thing even if they lift the stay-at-home orders we're not gonna have any money mm. we're all gonna be broke mm. y'all will be fine but y'all we're all gonna be broke i want to go on vacation and by god i'm gonna do it yeah today on this episode of the Chad Brather Show here in Studio 22. We're going on vacation, people. We're going to talk about vacations. We're going to talk about destinations, post-COVID paradise. We're going to talk about stories from the road, places we've been, places we want to go. It's the COVID bucket list, people. That's what we're going to do. So join us as we take a trip to Fantasy Island. <laughs> de plane, de plane. Ricardo Mandelbaum. Don't you know it? Yeah. Are you excited? I'm I'm actually really excited. I would reach out and grab your hand and we would skip together down the yellow brick road. Not allowed to. Not allowed to do that. Mm -mm. Hey, with all this talk about the coronavirus, people stop talking about the flu. It's killed a lot of people, man. 16,000 so far this year hospitalized over a quarter million in the U.S. And the season isn't even over. One of the best ways to avoid getting sick is a healthy immune system. I believe in it. 
which is why I fortify my body every single day with Field of Greens by Brickhouse Nutrition. Just one scoop has a full serving of real USDA certified organic fruits and vegetables, which boosts energy and supports a healthy immune system. I like this stuff. I like it a lot. That's why I'm so (laughs) full of life. (laughs) A diet. Doctors agree of fruits and vegetables can reduce your risk of heart disease. Plus, Field of Greens is prebiotic. It's probiotic and a great source of vitamins, fiber, and other nutrients. Just put one scoop in a glass of water, stir, and you are done. Right now, I'll save you 15% off with your first order with offer code CHAD at BrickHouseChad.com. Brick! Housechad.com. Subscribe today. You'll save an extra 10% every single month. This is virus season, people. Turn your immune system into a brick house with Field of Greens. BrickHouseChad.com. That's BrickHouseChad.com. It's what I require my wife to call me all the time. We'll be right back. I went to a nudist colony one weekend. Uh, you should never do that. That is not a good vacation. I've, I've been somewhere similar. For- it was not a vacation so much. I had to go to cover for a TV show. That okay. I was doing. Yeah, I had to go kind of cover this weekend. and It was like a, a nudist biker colony. Oh. Which ought to tell you there was a lot there. Uh, that you didn't want to see. Even if it's not a nudist biker colony, those nudist colonies aren't yeah. really... Yeah. I mean, it's not a bunch of Victoria's it, Secret models no, walking No, I mean, people have this idea. Steve, you ever been to one? Yeah, I used to... Well, not in one, but I used to drive by one over near well, Na- we've Navasota. we've driven past them and looked. Well, Navasota, I'm out of look. Texas, you can't see one, them. There's one, and I used to drive by it, and I was always trying to look over the fence and... Of course you were. like that, but she's <laughs> right. It's uh, it's not young people. It's usually the older people that just yeah. quit well, washing clothes. Well, and the and crazy thing about it, Candace, is the thing is you you have like a lot of people in there are still wearing their clothing, and then all of a sudden you just see a couple of people walk through and they're just butt naked, right? And it's like, oh, it's a Furby. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at that. It's a mushroom trying to survive in tall weeds. Uh, it's it's just, ugh. It's kind of gross. Uh, but, I mean, you know, when in Rome. Right? <laughs> have you ever been to a nude beach? Uh, yes. But you didn't get nude? Correct. Okay. Jesus was watching. Well, no. But. Yes, um, he was. I mean, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, Jesus is, you know, omnipresent. But I was, it was when I was a news reporter in Austin. There's a place called Hippie Hollow. Oh, we know Hippie Hollow. You know. Okay. Oh, yeah. And um, I went down there and I covered some story. Don't even remember what it was. But, you know, there were peeps down there doing their Hippie Hollow stuff. Yeah. Mm. Hippie Hollow. And I've been to beaches where um, you see the Europeans walking around topless. Sure. Um, our children have even been exposed to it. There's a lot to explain there, but yeah. you know we. I've do seen our best. that on South Beach in Miami. Now okay. that's a different story. <laughs> that's completely different. Was that story. during spring break? No, nah, just whenever. Okay, just whenever. The be- now, I, Miami's not my favorite place to be. It's just that's not my vibe, right? Um, and quite honestly, most coastal towns aren't really my thing. Okay, I, I'm whatever. You know, I'll visit, but I, I don't want to be there. I don't want to live there. Right. Uh, Miami is just, mm, it's not, this don't fit in Miami, right? Yeah. So I, you go out there, but the be- beaches are beautiful. It's almost like their beaches aren't sand. It's like they're crushed gravel. It's like just really soft sand that they've put out there. Yes. And then, yeah, and so you see a different thing. Out there. Mm-hmm. It's, it's different. It's not like Hippie Hollow at all. Correct. It's the anti hippie hollow, and then there was a time you've been to a nude beach, uh, Palma, Spain, topless Palma. at least topless beach. I don't, I don't think it. And was you were topless. Totally, yeah, I was topless. Yeah, and, uh, we were, uh, we were in, uh, we were in Corsa, Corsican, Corsica, Corsica, uh, Corsica. Corsican. Uh, no, we were not Corsican. Uh, I want to see if you were paying attention. That's <laughs> that's South Dallas. I know. Uh, we were in Corsica. An island off the coast of France. Never heard of it. And we, we, it was cold that day. And we were 
Jay and I were walking down the thing, and you could see down the seawall onto the, I guess you'd call it a beach. There was water, and okay. there was dirt, but it was kind of like being at the lake. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't a pretty beach or anything. It was just, yeah. anyway. And there were some people out there who were just doing their thing, like just laying out there on the rocks and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but I mean, to them, that's not a big sure. deal. No, it's not. We were at, we honeymooned in Negril in Jamaica. And we were at the resort and we were walking down the beach one day and suddenly we found ourselves on a nude beach. We didn't know. We didn't know. We just were walking. Suddenly we apparently passed a line of demarcation. <laughs> and Mark, pull that microphone over. Uh, <laughs> th- and suddenly it was like, you know how you're just kind of zoned out in your own little world talking yep. and, and you're just kind of focused on something. Then you walk down the deal and you're like, something has changed. <laughs> Something done come afoot. <laughs> Mark, have you ever been to anything like that? I actually, uh, fortunately, have not. Yeah, so, fortunately uh, is a correct. <laughs> yeah. 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 You pray the good Lord continues to smile on you, son. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And Candace, I ain't even asking you. You just nod your head, shake it. Yeah. I mean, who knows? You might have all kind of freak show stories going on, Candace. Hey. Yeah. She seems pretty... She's straight pretty straight laced. laced. Yeah. She's pretty straight laced. But there's a dark side. Mm-hmm. There is a little dark side to Candice. Candace, pull that microphone over there to you. Uh, <laughs> I want to know if you could go on vacation right now today. You pick a spot. Where would you go? Anywhere. Anywhere. Russia. On the globe. Moscow, Russia. Oh. Let's talk about that. Okay. Why? I've always wanted to go. I feel like it would be a really interesting experience. You have to register at the embassy that you're an American and tell them everywhere you're going to go. You have to buy K&R insurance, which is kidnap and ransom. I think Mm. that would be really fun. Mm. I was there for 15 days in 94 and miserable. Miserable. Now, I didn't go do the tourist thing. I I did a day of tourism. But I would go out into the outskirts, into the, the towns around it. We'd have to take the metro out, take the train out to these places. And they were so depressing. They were like mm, pet cemetery. But, you know, it, they were everything that you would think of Cold War Russia and the old sickle and hammer on the posters and stuff because there were still the, the remnants and the residue of communism that was there. Candace, it was depressing. Maybe it's changed. Maybe they're like all about tourism now. Maybe. Now, what mm. I've heard, even mm. then, what I heard was, and I saw some parties going on on some, you know, some flat balconies. You know, that's that's the apartments over there, the flats, uh, in my flat. Mm-hmm. And I assume they were having a good time. And I've heard that you can really party in Moscow. That's where all the strippers come from in the off season. <laughs> Oh. And go to Myrtle Beach, work at the club. Steve knows this. Uh, but <laughs> yes, I'm learning I do. so much. Matter of fact, I do. I know this very well. Uh, but yeah, I was depressed. Anyway, that's interesting. Interesting. But that would you consider that a vacation? Yeah, of course I would. That'd be so much fun. Okay. Anything you're doing that you enjoy doing wherever you go. Yeah. Be considered a vacation. It's true. I mean, a lot of people are considering this have to stay at home thing as kind of a staycation. Mm. But I think that everybody has this thing on the back of their mind. Like, what are we doing and what's coming next? Are we going to get sick? Is, you know, or you're thinking about somebody that you know who's gotten sick and you're, and you're dealing with the news media 24 7. And you, you know, you're worrying financially, is everything going to be okay? That's why it's kind of hard to have a staycation right now. Mm-hmm. Where would you go, News? Uh, well, it, it's it's not Moscow. <laughs> um, Come on, they pay high dollar. <laughs> anywhere? I, I, they will pay the high dollar for you. If, Good if, joint circus. Yeah. Well, I could do that in Oklahoma. <laughs> in Wynwood. If that's still running. I guess it's not running. Anymore. Oh, it's running. They no, because then now. they moved it down they close it, to us. Yeah, they moved it down to like Thackerville or wherever that is. We got to go up there and do that. We got to go. We? Yes. Do we do it? Yes. Okay. Do we Steve, go? Yes, we, we should do. go. Road tripping. I'll I'll provide. I've got a big old vehicle. We can just all, right. all throw it in there and Load go. Load up. I want to go to 
Bora Bora. Mm. I want to do one of those hut things. The huts out on the water. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, which is weird. I don't like being secluded too much. So For maybe with a group. Right. With a group of friends, though, would be fun. You know, I just got to find. Yeah. And us, we got to win the lottery. Because yeah. that's expensive, right? Well, you could do it on an affordable basis. No way. No. But. You can do it affordably, but it's on the other side of the globe. It is. It's not an easy place to get to. It's not easy, and I actually disagree. I don't think you can do that affordably. You can. No. There's ways. How? There are ways. I've researched this. I did. Well, then you know you're doing it in like on the black I market. I am a travel expert. <laughs> Lifestyles of the rich and famous. <laughs> the other side knows how to go to Bora Bora. <laughs> it is really pretty. It's gorgeous. I've, it's gorgeous, and and I and I'm gonna have to change mine because I was gonna say either Bora Bora or Tahiti. Oh, I stole it. You did. Uh, that's okay, but we can go together. We will go together. Okay, we'll get our I families and we'll go. And I'll show yeah. you how to do it affordably. <laughs> have you seen that show on? Uh, is it is it the H and G or is it the travel? One of those where you can buy your either either a private island. These people are real estate shopping for either vacation space or buying an island and they take them out there and they show them it's very uh excluded it's very exclusive and, and some people are just wanting to go for a month yeah some people are wanting to buy it forever it's a very interesting show it's a very interesting that. show especially when you consider some of the shit people buy yeah and i'm like you just bought a pile of dirt <laughs> that happens to rise up above mm -hmm. the ocean a little bit mm -hmm. but it's yours yeah it's yours and they're just sitting out there in the moss <laughs> Okay, ain't no electricity and no phones or anything, but that's crazy. Yeah. Steve, where are you going? Well, I've been all around the world, been to a bunch of countries and stuff, but I really think I would like to just take some time, get a couple of cadaver dogs, go to Tampa, and search the big cat rescue oh. area. That sounds like a good vacation, exciting, fun. See if I can find Carol Baskin's husband. Don Lewis. Don Lewis been missing for 23 mm. years, ever yeah. since 1997. And I think they're reopening the case. They are. They're going to check it out and see what's... Now, Carol has come out and said that if you want to dig up her septic tank and replace it, you can. She's made offers. You can do it. But that's because that thing, old Don Lewis is cat scat, I'm afraid. A lot of people say he's living in Costa Rica, but I just don't believe a man would move to Costa Rica. Um without his money and leave all <laughs> of his money behind. Yeah, unless he had some money down there that we that didn't know. He could have. Yeah. He could have had plenty of money. I mean, how much money his does His friends don't have? seem to think so. His friends and acquaintances, the people close to him, his secretary doesn't seem to think so. So he could have. Maybe it was a big disappearing act. I don't know. Yeah. But, I mean, anything could happen. Puppet Master, anywhere you want to go. I think I'd want to do uh, scuba diving in like the Caribbean or something like that. Yeah, scuba yeah. diving. Have you yeah. ever done that? I've never done that. Um, okay. But I grew up in Florida, so I was in the water a lot. So I think it'd be super fun. I want to go to Cleveland. Ohio, <laughs> Texas. Ohio. Oh, okay. I want. I just want to go to Cleveland, so I can be the king. <laughs> I'll just be the king. I'll rule it, Cleveland. That is a change from Bora Bora. Yeah. Tahiti. Yeah. Cleveland. You know what? You know what I like. I say that tongue in cheek, but there's something about going to places like Cleveland and like um, uh, Green Bay and places like yeah. Just there's just something about Boise. it. Steve, we're gonna talk about this in the next segment. We got stories from the road, and I can prove this to you. I can prove to you. We've had the best time in some of the most inadvertent places, yeah. places that you would never think that you would have that but honestly if i could go on vacation right now today i'd go to folly beach south carolina my friends ken and lynn holland are over there mm -hmm. lots of good friends over there they got the they got the uh good food they got good drink good people you can drive your golf cart up and down the streets that's can, actually where we're going this summer if yeah this thing clears so, up we love it steve and i've been there we've hung out i've been there numerous times uh go to the crab shack and eat they got great oysters over there uh, last, well, the, not the last time I was there, but uh, one time we were there for five days and I just, I saw all I ate was raw oysters the entire five days. I just went from one place to the next getting raw oysters. Yeah. But, uh, 
you know, we got dear friends over there, like I said, Ken and Lynn, and and we have a blast, man. We have a blast. Beach is fun, but it's a hidden it's a hidden little treasure, just south of Charleston, South Carolina, Folly Beach, and it's just a cool place. And now American Airlines, this sounds like an advertisement. American Airlines will fly you to Charleston direct, nonstop. That's a that's a great deal from DFW. Mm. So good little deal. It's just something to think about. Something to think about. And I like for it cheap right now. Yeah. Uh, beautiful place. Anyway, there's a lot of things. I, I'm not a big fan of vacationing in America. Okay. Right? Um, I like to get away from it. Yeah. I like Cabo. Um, I'm not a Cozumel or a Puerto Vallarta kind of person or whatever. I, I, you know, I go to Cabo if I'm going to go to Mexico. I like the Caribbean. It's nice. Places like that. We'll go to Tahiti. We'll go to Bora Bora. Yeah. I thank you to Bora Bora. Thank you. I take you to Bora Bora. You don't worry. I buy you diamonds. For cheap. You love them. For very cheap. I'll be right back. I'll tell you one thing that happened to me, Candice, when I was in Moscow. And you're right about that kidnapping and ransom insurance. Uh, I didn't buy any. That was a mistake. <laughs> Probably. It was before it? that. I mean, you know, I used to go to places on the globe that were on the do not fly or the, you know, warning against flying to list, like Nigeria. I would not go to Nigeria today. Uh, just heard from one of my friends, uh, Shegun, uh, in Nigeria. He sent me a message the day before yesterday. Miss those people, uh, my friends. Anyway, but I was, we kind of got turned around walking and wound up in an alley and we got followed in by the john wick looking goons you know fortunately the guy i was with was about six foot five and 270 pounds and then the other guy was about five foot three and 270 pounds and so <laughs> then we managed to kind of push our way back through but i was that, that made me a little nervous i was like okay that sounds fun oh it's going down now mm. it's going down now where my brass knuckle mm. Texas gun experience. They do have some. Y'all have brass knuckles. Brass knuckles. I bought some. Yes. They're not brass, but they're hard steel. Mm -hmm. Knuckles Kenny. Is that what that was? Anyway, that brand. Yeah. I follow them on Instagram. It's, it, they're pretty cool. Yeah. 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 See, like it's legal in Texas. You can carry that, Steve. Yeah, they used to not be. But you can't hit anybody with them. <laughs> <laughs> if you hit anybody with them, whole other story. Yeah, that's. Like deadly weapon. The song kind of was stuff. a deadly weapon. Yep. But I mean, who gonna know? Who gonna know? Who gonna know? They might when they see that trademark or that, right. that logo on the side of their broken jaw. And it would break your jaw. Oh, it'd mess oh, you jack up. Jack you up. Yeah. So anyway, uh switchblade, man. Vacation. Steve, you and I have traveled a lot. We traveled close to two hundred thousand miles in the air last year. <laughs> do you remember any of it nope i you like if uh, you would i i stay inebri inebriated <laughs> inebriated how do you say that you said it right <laughs> inebriated yeah 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 it, there's a lot of that do you remember we were in syracuse we were in syracuse and that, i couldn't wake you up yeah that morning and i was literally thinking what am i going to do if this man is in that room dead didn't you oh. uh, call my wife that day or i did something? yeah i did and it's funny Tony, Steve's wife, rules the roost. She sure. is in charge 100%. Steve is not. Fact. I just show up. <laughs> That's fact. Steve <laughs> is not in charge. Steve does not have control. He's never had control. He never wanted control. He never asked for control. That's fine. All right? Now, he plays. He talks a big game. He'll talk a big game. Yeah. I'll do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> when I want to do it. When until I they say, do it. Come on. And... Uh, I banged on the door. I had the office call, the desk call is how a uh, uh, room. I mean, I was calling. I could hear the phone ringing through the deal. This went on for half an hour, and I'm like, the man is dead. Normally, he's out in the car waiting on me. Got it. Because Steve is early to being early, right? And I'm like, all right, something's wrong. I'm mm -hmm. gonna have to. They're gonna have to come bust this door. We're going in here like Bin Laden's compound. Yeah. And I called Tony. I said, call your husband. Her ringtone went off. Answered immediately. Hello. Click. Hey, well, hey, baby. Hey, what? Hey, here I am. Here I am. No, there's just certain noises and certain it's things you wake up to versus the, things you don't. 
Truth. And people pounding on the door wasn't? No. Okay. That was, that was he out. was gone, that gone. Was dead to the world. We'd only been a, uh, probably asleep a few hours. Yeah. We'd only, you know. I'm so glad you weren't dead, though. I I'm really glad am I wasn't glad. Either. Yeah. Yeah. That's I think good. I'd taken a bad I was drill like, or he done gone Jimi Hendrix on my ass. Mm-hmm. He done pulled a Janice Joplin. Mm-hmm. He done pulled a Jim Morrison. Yeah. Jim Morrison. What's his name? The Doors? Jim Morrison. Is that not it? That's it. That's Jim that's Morrison. It. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, the day becomes the night. Night destroys the day. I don't know the words. I'm not a hippie. Uh, hippie hollow. Yeah. Yeah. I am ticked off, though. I am ticked off that our ratings are not higher than they are. Let me just go on a little rabbit trail right here. Get it. And I've decided if you take your shirt off, if you would get topless. Steve. Ready? Here let's it all, is. Let's Do go. it. Oh. <laughs> anyway. We've had some good times in some crazy places. We were in Wabash, Indiana. Wasn't it Wabash? Sounds familiar. <laughs> and we wound up in this house that used to be a house, and now it was a bar. And we made all kind of friends. And I turn around, and Steve is talking to everybody at the bar. And they all had their firearms laid out oh, on yeah, the bar. That, I remember that now. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that was a great one because they can carry in a bar and everywhere. there, And they're pulling them apart and show everybody's showing off there. And I felt like. I was the only person in there without a gun. Hmm. Yeah. It yeah. Was. Everybody had guns. Nobody felt threatened in any way, nope. shape, or form. I mean, everybody was it's fine. Everybody's worried about stuff, but we weren't. Sure. Nobody's worried in places like that. Everybody else out there is worried about it when they read, hear stories like that. Oh, my God. People had guns. <laughs> they didn't shoot anybody. It's mm-hmm. fantastic. Um, what else? We were in Bakersfield, California when, when Vince got his ribs broken. Yep. And probably from you punching him. Probably. That was the only time we've ever had an altercation where we got kicked out of a bar. And there was friendly fire. I'm trying to think. I thought we got kicked out of one other bar. Steve's been kicked out of a couple of bars. Yeah. Yeah. And I could tell those stories as well. Yeah, but that really wasn't the last time was not. I'll tell that story. I'll tell that story. Um, (laughs) Vince now has the COVID coronavirus. So we're praying for him and his wife, Holly. Uh, Vince is better. Vince Moreno, he's he's been with us. Uh, He's traveled with us been on the show uh vince is better holly's really having a hard time with it Mm. he said it's the weirdest thing man no taste no smell and body aches fever chills the whole thing he says really rough i mean he was i was talking to him yesterday and he said man people really got to take this thing seriously if if, he's just getting out in crowd stuff they're gonna regret it they're going to regret it. I mean, after what he's been through, he's dead serious about it. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, somebody that's experienced something, you got to listen to him. And, you know, he just lost his friend, Joe Diffie. Yeah. You know, to yeah. Saint. Do you, are people, <clears throat> I thought everybody's kind of ex, not experiencing this differently, but maybe differently. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's more severe for some people than others. Because I heard the other day Andy Cohen is recovering from it, the Bravo dude that yeah. does like all the Real Housewives, he explained the same exact symptoms that you're saying Vince mm-hmm. explained as well. But then I've also heard people that were, it wasn't quite as severe. It wasn't as severe as mild, yeah. And I think a lot of people have gone through that and maybe not even known it. Okay. That's that's my thinking. And I think a lot of people would agree with me on that. Oh, and let me correct something that I said on Monday that was inaccurate. Okay. Uh, I said that John Prine had died. I had sick. got I had gotten the wrong information from a mutual friend who had told me on Sunday night that he had passed, late Sunday night. He was in critical. They had moved him to critical in ICU. Then he stabilized, but he was still in really bad shape. So, anyway, uh, misinformation, Got wrong it. information, and I apologize for that. Uh, but, yeah, there's different different things for different people that's mm-hmm. going on. Now, Steve, we were with Dan Crenshaw, and he had his one good eye in. And we were having some drinks at the hotel bar, minding our own business. Mm -hmm. And an altercation broke out down the bar. Well, we mind our own. Except Steve doesn't know how. (laughs) Steve (laughs) is got to be in it. He wants to be the guy that breaks it up. He's got to be the peacemaker. Oh, okay. So now everybody's got to pat him on the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's got to let me buy you around, buddy. Nope. He was part of it. Got his ass kicked out. <laughs> now, that's, like, not, that's not. To- well, I did get kicked out. 
But as I was le- actually leaving, all of a sudden the manager realized that I was the one that stopped the fight from happening, and they tried to come get me, and that turned into a whole nother. I'm like, no, no we're out of here. Yeah. We stayed. Like, Dan and I stayed. Yeah. Yeah, we stayed. <laughs> well, they were going to let you stay, it sounds like, because you were trying to Oh, they to make... were going to, but it was already too late. It was too late. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, okay. it's what it is. And, and, and Steve, you know, and then we were in D.C. Uh, recently when a fight broke out at a bar. See, you're not missing anything by staying home, people. Right. People are crazy out there. I don't know why y'all want to go back out in public. And Steve start. I could see, boy, he started to go. He started to go try and get in the middle of it. And I just grabbed him and said, get on back. Bougie Sean grabbed me and pulled me out of the way. And uh, he was Bougie protecting Sean me. was hiding under the table. I know. He pulled me <laughs> down there with him. But uh, Steve started to go, and I had to grab Steve by the belt. I said, no, don't do it. Steve's drawn to it like a moth to the flames. <laughs> I just don't like, I think it's bull crap, going to a bar to have some drinks, not to go in there to fight. And if I could break it up, I'll break it up. Yeah. And if I might, I might have to throw a punch or two, but. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> not, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll be back and throw some more punches in just a second. Don't touch your face, Natalie. That's a habit I have. Touch mine. <laughs> we should make up a song. Don't touch your face. Your, your achy, breaky face. Yeah. That'd be funny. Your wormy, germy face. Mm-hmm. There we go. It's so your we're hands. Already, we've it's already written part of it. Let's get right it. Here. Let's get that recorded. My today. hand feels like it's done something wrong. Yeah, it has. Because I'm washing it all the time now. Yeah. Have y'all Just, seen that video? It's in the shower. Yeah. It's under the water. <laughs> like he doesn't. He doesn't let me touch his face. He's using his elbow to open doors and stuff. Why doesn't he use me anymore? Yeah, it's it's a pretty funny little video. It's, it's a song from the perspective of the hand. Yeah. It's good stuff. Um, I, I don't know, Steve, I've, I gotta be honest. I've enjoyed not having to go to the airport every other day. Me too. I've kind of like, it's kind of crazy, but I've like, it's kind of nice being at home. I'm starting to like my wife. We can't get spoiled with this. I know. (laughs) We can't get spoiled. I still have people who are saying they're mad at me because they think I'm making light. I'm not making light of anything. We're just, but I don't go through life in a panic or pessimistic Mm -hmm. or negative that's not me that's not how i do Mm -hmm. uh i laugh through it all i'm gonna i'm gonna find humor in it all that's what i do i do too and it it pisses people off including sometimes death we find humor and it's sometimes it's sick and like that but you know in my experience working in the operating room is you almost have to take a step back and because you're cutting flesh you're you know and have to saving you, lives you yeah but you have to in your mind you kind of you know have to almost dehumanize it a little bit to i have a friend uh that uh he's a mortician has been for 30 some years and uh he uh you know, they had to go out and when they train, they go to school for all that. They have to see a lot of bad stuff and they have to like he'd travel with the EMTs, EMSs, and they go to accident scenes and stuff. And he said a lot of times they would be hyping themselves up of saying, what are we going to find? What are we going to find? Almost like taking bets on. I bet this is what's going on. Yeah. And it wasn't to dehumanize. It was just a thing where they were like saying, we got to get mentally prepared to objectify ourselves from this situation in order to deal with it properly. Um, and I'm not saying that's universal, but he said that he saw that a number of times. Yeah, no, that's kind of what I was saying though. You kind of have to, you know, get it in your head. Yeah. Well, and I think everybody deals with stress in different ways and, and let them like you, you do you. I find, I am the same way. I find humor, even at a funeral, I'll find her. And it's really just to, it's my coping mechanism. I'm like Chandler being on friends. I'm going to find the humor and all of it because it's almost too much to take. It doesn't mean I have less of a heart. Yeah. Than anyone else. It is a coping thing. I and I I uh I but I mean, you know, people they get so mad. You know, oh Chad, yeah. you should be you should be using your platform to really want No, that's not what we do here. That's that's not what we do. Mm-hmm. I mean and, and and then when I do share the serious stuff, when the stuff gets shared on my page, or we talk about bodies being loaded into a refrigerated truck and yeah. show you the video of it, everybody loses their mind. You shouldn't be sharing stuff like this. You should be positive <laughs> and uplifting and encouraging. We're just sharing life. Yeah. That 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 is exactly what Chad Prather 
show does. You That's just, what we do. You just share. Yeah. And sometimes we just chill like we are today and hang out and talk, and we just dream about getting out, getting out, getting all the way to the FBI. Oh, I want, I'm sorry. Silence of the Lambs, if anybody was wondering. Yeah. You, you, we were supposed to talk about travel, and we talked about where we wanted to go, But you, and I know you said that Folly Beach. Beach was, is that the number one place you want to go on vacation? I'd love to know where everybody wants to go. Well, I, Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Where you've been, that's your favorite place. I said that wrong. Uh, it's, it's, it's up there. Okay. It's hard for me to tell, because I've been everywhere. I have been everywhere. So nothing really pops out. No, because like, at 47 years of age, I'm at a point where I'm, I'm like, I enjoy being home. Okay. You know, I used to look at the airplanes in the sky and be like, I don't care where it's going. I just want to be on it. Yes. And like, that was that gypsy thing that was inside of me. And, you know, my nickname is Jip. People have called me that forever. And because I just couldn't, I was restless. I didn't like being that way. Mm-hmm. I had no contentment. Got it. It's still hard for me to be content. Because I'm always yeah. hustling. I'm always striving, right? Okay. Uh, and I don't know how to sit down on the inside a lot of times. Well, I can't. That's one thing I struggle with, like at home now and being home all the time. I can't stay in the same room yeah. for more than a couple of minutes. I got to go see what anybody else is doing in the house or what's going to. Yeah. Am I missing something? Same. Yeah, I have that issue. I have that, that too. That's when it's like, you know, Jade's always said, we don't need a big house. And I'm like, yeah, we kind of do. <laughs> For moments like these, yeah. I want to go hide in the arboreum or whatever. You know, I'll be in the narthex. <laughs> I'll be in the study. I'll be in the ninth bedroom, the third study. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, I, there's a lot of places I enjoy going. You know, Jade loves going to Europe. I love going to Ireland, okay. Scotland. Yeah. Um, you know, we were just in Ireland back in December? Yeah. De- November or December? Uh, it don't matter. I, don't I think know. it was December. November, December. Early December. And... Yeah, I love it. I mean, I love going over there. It's just a different way of life. Mm. Uh, it's a different pace. Uh, I love going to places like I don't need to see the ocean. You know, a lot of people are like, let's go to the mountains or let's go to the... Like right now, what I would love to do, you know, our buddy Jack Carr, who's got his new book, Savage Sun, coming out, uh, third book in the series. He lives in Park City, Utah. You know, he's up there where, where the ski slopes are and stuff, and he does cross-country skiing, and he's out there. He's a wilderness kind of guy, you know, former Navy SEAL, and... He's out outdoorsy. And I look at stuff like that. Like I could be in one of those cabin chalets with glass everywhere, you know, looking out over those mountains right now. Like, yeah. That's uh, some of the Braun brothers that are have their place up there in Idaho. Idaho and they built a little cabin. It's like out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And I'm like, man, that is so cool. I could handle that. Yeah. And then you've got, then you've got places like where Kevin Fowler is down in the hill country. He lives in Wimberley. Yep. And, you know, he's bought. He's got this little ranch out there, and he's got mm-hmm. his, his out in the middle of nowhere in the hill country of Texas. And he's got his little dance hall out there. He's doing his um, two-step Tuesdays or whatever he's doing, his honky-tonk Tuesdays, where he's bringing in different guests. Like this past Tuesday, it was him and uh, John Wolf. they out there playing. I'm, in uh, the, uh, I'm going to go do my podcast at his uh, yeah. bar here pretty soon. It's already set up. We just got to wait till all this stuff clears. Yeah. So, you know, there's places like that. I could live down in the hill country. I I, I actually kind of have a goal one day to get down there. Okay. Yeah. I Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. As long as it has yeah. a guest house for Steve to live in. Yeah, well, so we'll yeah. see. <laughs> well, his house is going to be big. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what they say. I mean, you know, we may never recover. We may never go back on the road. We may never get to. You but will. if we do, we'll you be in will. Huntsville, Texas on the 6th of June. <laughs> we'll be in Billy Bob's, Texas in Fort Worth on the 7th of June. And yep. then we've moved uh, to the 28th and 29th of June for Pueblo, Colorado and Grand Junction, Colorado. But who knows? Who yeah. knows? I need people to go to watchchad.com and support us. I need them to, to get some Cameo videos. I, I've enjoyed doing that. Uh, the Cameo app is a thing where you can actually you pay me. I'm a capitalist. You pay me to create a customized video for someone in your life that you want to send the little humorous video to. Happy birthday, happy anniversary, don't die. Those kind of things. We're having fun. Yeah. But no, I, I like I like Jade loves going to Europe. She's a big fan of Italy, although I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. You know? Because mm-hmm. that place is on the shutdown. Yeah. I mean, that's really bad over there. And but she likes going to Europe. I'm okay with it. Eh. Okay. Yeah. 
eh. I'm going to go to North Korea because there's no COVID there, and there's none in and there's none in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Only old poor people get it. I mean, the rich people get it. Rich people, right? The poor people don't get it in Mexico. It's a rumor. That's that's what the president said. Not our president. Their president, because our president never tells a lie. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love you, Donnie T. Did you see his hair the other day in the Rose Garden when he was giving the presser? And the wind started blowing, and it was just all over the place. He's like, see, it's my hair. <laughs> my hair. Do, do what you have to have when you're president. Does his hair color change, though? It's gotten lighter. I think he's gotten less orange. It's just yeah, everybody can't was... spray tan it's, right it's now. It's gotten really, it's gotten lighter, Silver-ish. which is his version of turning gray. Okay. Oh, okay. Right? It's his version of turning gray. So He's not as orange. It's a stressful job being president. Totally. And I see pictures of him. And, and like, it's gotten, the whites of the eyes have gotten more pronounced. All right. You know what I'm saying? Spray tans, the whole thing. I mean, he yeah. spray tans. That's his deal. Yeah. I'm talking about spray tanning. We, yeah. we started this thing. Talking about. Sarah Gonzalez told me about a cream you get, and you put water in it, and it spreads out, and you rub it on. Have you played with that No, at all? I'd have that jacked up in no time. Yeah, it'd be I, all between your fingers. I can't On your it. nails and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll have to talk mm-hmm. to Sarah about that. We will. We have to rub some on us. When we come back, we'll be tan. Don't <laughs> move. Well, the thing I can encourage everybody with is no matter what it looks like, when it all comes to a conclusion, this will end. All of this will end. Sometimes I look around and I'm like, this is a weird world we're living in. It's kind of crazy right now. Um, I do believe there is a lot of fear mongering out there. I think there are people out there who are very worried. And and there's some people who, who should be very cautious. If you have underlying conditions, if you have lung issues, uh, if you have, you know, these various things, be careful. Yep. Don't I, get around crowds of people right now. I think worrying is something within itself that yep. can you can make your literally make yourself sick. You can. It causes a lot of health problems. Anxiety is not good for you at all. So that's one of the reasons I believe that laughter is like medicine and we can just chill mm-hmm. and relax. And I hope we were able to convey that when we're talking to everybody and having a good time and, and just kind of cutting up a little bit. So, you know, that's our goal. Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians. I just look at her and my stress level, yeah, stays about the same. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I want everybody, I want everybody healthy and well. I hate seeing these things. Well, you know, we're probably going to see this number of people die. And all. I'm like, ugh, I hate hearing those prognostications of the thing. Uh, so we're praying for you. We're praying for our country, praying for our world. And, uh, you know, America is important to everyone on the planet. People might not mm-hmm. like to admit that, but it's right. important. There's certain things I wish we were handling different, but we're not. So that's that's that. But it's going to end. It's going to come to pass, folks. It is. But in the meantime, you can go to watchchad.com, check us out, and go to where podcasts are offered. Specifically, go to Apple Podcasts, scroll down, subscribe at the top if you have it. But scroll down, give us a five-star rating. We deserve it. And a good review so we can continue climbing higher in the rankings. I'm coming for you, back. Watch Chad.com. We'll talk to you next week here on the Chad Prather Show. Love y'all. God bless. Bye.